Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. All right guys, so we're gonna move on to the top right of the film strip where we have basically what I call the quick filter system. Now, these quick filters basically allow you to quickly select a filter option uh, based on these common settings. So whether we wanna filter by flags or stars or color labels or select our own filter system based on these presets. Now, what I like to do is I like to use this for quick filtering because it works in any module. So basically, if I'm in the develop module and I only want to see flagged images, I just click on this and it's an, it's kind of a navigational constant regardless of what module you're in because it allows you to quickly filter out images based on these basic characteristics regardless of where you are. Now, if you're in your library module, so I'm going to hit G to go back to the library module. This works the exact same way as the filter menu, which we previously discussed. I'm going to hit backslash to pull up that menu. And we can see that when we have this activated, all it did was went to the attributes and activated the filter by flag status uh, in our library filter menu. So all this does is just, it, it's basically a quick activation tool to activate these basic types of filtering systems. Now I'm gonna hit backslash again to close the library filter menu. And what I wanna bring up is I don't want you guys to confuse this quick filtering system with the toolbar because it actually looks pretty similar. I'm gonna hit T to bring up my toolbar. And again, in the toolbar, I see flag status right here. I see stars and I see color labels. But in the toolbar, you're actually using these to assign these attributes to images and not to filter by them. Whereas in the film strip, you're using these to only filter, not to assign. So let me hit T again to toggle closed my toolbar. And let's go back and go through a couple more examples. If I click on any one of these filters again, like I already have it on flag status, if I click it again, it'll go back to regular. It'll turn off that filter. I can filter by unflagged. I can filter by rejected, which right now we don't have any rejected photos. I can filter by stars. And we can also change our operator just like we would in the filter menu by clicking right here. And we can have the rating is equal to whatever number we want, whether it's zero or three or four uh, or five, whatever we have. I can turn it off again by clicking five stars and then choosing greater than so that it basically gives me everything. Or I can do the quick and easy way, just going to the right side and just saying no filter from the very top, and it'll automatically clear out those filters. And lastly, we can filter by color label. So let's see if we have any color labels assigned right now, which I don't think we do. So if we quickly picked an image and then said, uh, look, we typed in six to assign it to red, and then we filtered to red, we would see that image pop up in our filters. All right, now I'm gonna turn off that filter just by going to the menu and clicking on filters off. And we can also select presets based on whatever we assign. So we can create new presets for filtering or we can pick one of these default presets. Now what I'd recommend is if you guys need to do any advanced filtering beyond just these basic attributes, it's just easier to pull up your uh, filters menu in the library module by hitting backslash and choosing those filters right here. And if you want, you can save those as a preset if that's something that you frequently use. But this system is really, really easy and intuitive. And once you have that filter selected, you can hit backslash again and just see all of your images with that filter. All right, guys, so let's move on to the last piece of our film strip, which is just the thumbnail view. Now, by now, you guys probably know that you can navigate through the th film strip by hitting the left and right arrows or by selecting an image. We also know that we can actually customize what we see in our film strip thumbnail view by going to the preferences. So right now we've turned on everything so that we can see the flag attributes, star attributes, color labels, and everything like that. But if we wanna customize it, we can hit control comma or command comma on a Mac to bring up our preferences, go to the interface tab, and then on the film strip, we can customize exactly what we wanna see in the film strip. We can choose whether we want to show photos in the navigator on mouse over or show the photo info tooltips, show stack counts, badges, ratings, and picks. Normally I have these left three selected and I will also normally select this uh, show photos and navigator on mouse over, but because during this recording, it can kind of get crazy when this navigator is flipping to different images as I mouse over things, I've turned it off for just the purpose of these recordings. But normally I would turn that on as well. The show photo info tool tips is up to you guys. I think it kind of gets annoying. It keeps popping up when I don't want it to. Usually when I want to see more information on an image, I'm just going to look at my metadata or my histogram. But just know that we can customize how that film strip looks and what we're seeing by these preferences. All right, so let's close up the preferences. So the last, last thing that I want to go over in the film strip is our right-click menu, which is going to bring up a listing of common functions that you might want to do to these images in this menu. So we have the option to lock this to the second window, which we know is going to bring up our secondary display and lock that image in place so we can compare it to whatever we want. I'm going to close this, and then we also have next is the option to show it in Explorer. We know exactly what that does. It'll bring up your Explorer or Finder window on a Mac, 
and it'll show you that file in Explorer. We can also go to the folder in the library or go to any collection if it's in a collection. If it's not, it'll say not in any collections. We have the option to edit in various applications, which we went over previously when we were discussing uh, the editing in third-party applications such as Photoshop and stuff like that. We can also set flag ratings, set uh, star ratings, color labels, whatever we want directly from this menu, although using the shortcuts is going to be much, much quicker. We can add keywords directly from this menu, add it to a quick collection directly from this menu. We can stack them. And stacking is basically where you stack an image on top of each other. And it's, it's something that I don't find particularly useful because what it does, I'm going to show you an example. If I take these two images and I hit Control G, it's going to group them up into a stack. And so this stack, I know it's in a stack because if you look right here on the right side, you can see that you have the stack little bars right here. So if I click that, it'll show me everything that's in that stack. Now, I don't like using stacks because I, I never re see that little icon and I never realize that those images are stacked and so it makes it hard to find things. But if you want to stack something, you can stack it from that, from that menu and then you can unstack it from the same menu as well. So if I go down here and I right click again, I can go to stacking and I can say to unstack those items. So if you use stacking, you can access from that menu as well. Let's right click again. Let's go over our next option, which is to create a virtual copy. Now, Creating a virtual copy is different from actually copying an image. A virtual copy is just a copy of that image with different settings. When you first create the virtual copy, you can do it by clicking in that menu, or you can use the shortcut which we used previously, which is control and apostrophe, or command apostrophe on a Mac. This creates an identical version of this image, which doesn't take up any very little extra space on your hard drive because it's not actually copying the raw file. It's just adding an additional virtual copy with new settings. So we can go and customize these settings. Maybe I'll convert this one to a black and white image. And now when I export my images, I have two versions of the same image, but I didn't really use up any extra space. So it's a great way to create different versions of an image while saving a hard drive space because we're not copying the actual original file. Now I'm going to go back to my menu and I'm actually going to delete this by hitting delete photo. It's going to remove the original uh, virtual copy. And let's go back to our menu and we have the next option which is develop settings. We can apply uh, develop settings from basically the quick develop just like we would in this quick develop panel right here to the image just through this menu. The next option we have is metadata presets. We can apply metadata presets directly to these images from the right click menu. We can also rotate left and rotate right the image. We can save metadata to a file, which is the XMP files, or we can have it read metadata from an XMP file. Say if we move an XMP file into the catalog folder, we can have it read that XMP and update the developed settings by clicking here. You can also export directly from this menu and it'll give you uh, the full export dialog box right here, or it also shows you all of your different export presets on the, right below it. If you click export with previous, it's going to export using the exact same settings that you used previously. So it'll put it in the same folder with the same presets with everything. So it's really useful if say you're exporting one image at a time, you want them to all go to the same place, but you're kind of handpicking each one. All right, moving on, we have email photo, which will allow you, this is actually a new feature in Lightroom 4. It allows you to quickly email a photo to whoever you want. You just need to set up your email system. And this will actually work through Gmail, AOL, Outlook, basically any common email system. It's a really powerful new time-saving tool. So. Let's click cancel to jump out of here. Lastly, we have the delete photo, which we've gone over several times. And we also have view options where we can change our actual view options directly from this menu without having to go into our preferences. So again, it's the same way to access those preference interface options for the film strip, but directly from the film strip itself. We also have almost the exact same right click menu if we click in the content area. We can see basically almost the exact same thing. The only thing that changes up is at the very end this view option switches up a little bit because this will actually take us into our library view options where we can choose different things. Now most everything in these menus are things that we've already gone over. It's just another way of accessing those different tools if you forget the shortcuts or if you forget menu items. Alright, so we've gone over most everything in the library module interface itself. Now in the next few videos we're going to discuss some different functionality of the library module as well as kind of give you some examples of our culling and editing system.